Chronic disease, what is chronic disease? Well, basically, it's simply an, an illness or an ailment that's expected to last for more than a year. And we generally know what many of them are. Heart disease, cancer, diabetes, lung disease, uh, arthritis, chronic infections, uh, and, and they're, they're, you can add more to this list. But these are ailments that people live with, and frequently they're on you know, medications for them or get, they're getting intermittent treatments, maybe surgeries or procedures. A diagnostic procedures. So there's a chronic condition that you're having to quote unquote manage. But what underlies these chronic illnesses? The two areas I want to uh, focus on today, inflammation being one, uh, oxidative stress will be the other. Uh, an abnormal microbiome could be a third. I won't talk about that very much today, but I want you to keep that in the back of your mind because you know, perhaps when I do this talk in the future, I'll probably talk more about your abnormal microbial ecosystem, which I think has a big impact on your overall health. But first and foremost, inflammation, I like to equate to a biochemical fire. Chronic inflammation underscores just about every chronic illness that we know of. This slide doesn't show these words very large, but you got cancer here, neurological diseases, metabolic disorders, bone and joint diseases, autoimmune disease, cardiovascular disease. All of these are underscored by chronic inflammation, essentially, it's driven by your immune system, it's in disarray. Uh, and so there's this chronic ongoing uh, uh, triggering of, of cytokines at low levels uh, that are causing uh, immune mediators to go and, and cause damage. You got these little wars, these little inflammatory processes. Uh, I, I use the analogy of smoldering coals. If anyone's done any barbecuing, uh, when I used to barbecue in the days I was a meat eater, you'd get your coals smoldering uh, they weren't flared up, but they were smoldering. So that's like your chronic inflammation. If you spray lighter fluid on it, then you get a fire, a flame, and that's a flare up. And so an acute flare up of someone who has, say, a chronic obstructive lung disease, they have going to a COBD exacerbation. That's a flare up from a chronic inflammatory process. Then if inflammation flares up, they become acutely ill. The other major area is oxidative stress. Uh, these go hand in hand. Uh, oxidative stress is, I like to, uh, akin to excess toxic chemicals. You know, we may refer to them as uh, reactive oxygen species or free radicals. Uh, but essentially, if you've ever seen an apple that's sliced and set on the counter and exposed to air, it starts to brown before your eyes almost. Uh, that's similar to a cell that degenerates over time due to oxidative stress. At the, at the molecular level, you see free radicals, which are electron uh, poor, uh, and they get, they're unstable in this electron poor state. So they then can cause cellular damage, uh, DNA damage, uh, but they can be stabilized by antioxidants. Source of antioxidants are leafy green vegetables, which is why we uh, recommend these things. You know, walking on the earth or grounding can, can have an antioxidant effect. So uh, you have this unbalanced, uh, uh, excessive amount of free radicals or reactive oxygen species it tilts the balance in favor of, you know, peroxidative uh, uh, molecules. And so that creates uh, a net oxidative stress. And that can then lead to progressive deterioration and degeneration at the cellular and tissue level. So these are the foundations of chronic illness. <clears throat> and to the extent that these episodes become more imbalanced, an individual become more ill. Now, how does this work mechanistically uh, from an inflammation standpoint as it deals with the cardiovascular system. Well, inflammation in the cardiac system uh, potentiates a number of things. Inflammation contributes to what we call the pathogenesis and progression of heart failure. You know, at the cellular level, uh, you can have these pro-inflammatory pro cytokines. And many of you have heard of people going into cytokine storms, especially during the COVID uh, epidemic and the people were dying, they go into cytokine storm. These cytokines are just, uh, molecular intermediaries are used by the immune system. Uh, they're signaling molecules uh, and they trigger more inflammatory uh, activity. Uh, these pro-inflammatory cytokines, some that have been identified, IL-1 beta, uh, TNF alpha, the names are not that important. Uh, I'm mentioning these because when I talk about some of the research we're planning to do later on, uh, we're going to show that we're going to be looking at some of these uh, pro-inflammatory cytokines. But these cytokines have been associated with abnormal heart function. Systolic function, dysfunction is when the heart doesn't contract normally, it doesn't squeeze normally, it doesn't eject blood normally. 
Diastolic dysfunction is when the heart doesn't relax normally, it doesn't allow it to feel, uh, uh, it doesn't feel normally. And so the amount of volume that's circulated, your old cardiac output is impaired if the filling and release of blood is abnormal. And so we can see at the biochemical level how these things can have an effect on the heart and then it can affect you uh, physiologically. Uh, so acute heart failure, we can think of it as a cytokine storm of the cardiovascular system. <clears throat> now, if we talk about inflammation in the endothelium, these are the cells that line the blood vessels. Uh, inflammation in the endothelium uh, results in an impairment of uh, nitric oxide generation. Um, the, the impairment here releases what we call free re, uh, reactive oxygen species. So you have increased oxidation associated with inflammation. So that's how these two can play hand in hand. Uh, reduction nitric oxide bioavailability has two major effects. Uh, a molecule or cytoskeletal uh, structural molecule called Titan, it actually is a framework of the heart it's normally elastic. And if, if this becomes impaired, over phosphorylated or, or under phosphorylated rather, it causes the heart to stiffen. So you can see how impaired inflammation to lead to reduction of nitric oxide, stiffening of the heart. Uh, secondly, uh, impaired nitric oxide can lead to thickening of the heart muscle cells, further causing stiffening of the heart. So you can see how the biochemistry directly connects with the physiology. So people have come into my office and do an echocardiogram and say, oh, well, you have what's called diastolic dysfunction. You have a stiff heart. Well, why is that? What's the cause of that? You know, there are biochemical causes related to inflammation, uh, nitric oxide impairment uh, that directly contributes to this. Uh, endothelial inflammation causes a range of other types of uh, effects. The molecules that, that sits on the cell surface uh, we call some of them VCAM, elastin. These are the names are not that important, but these are cells that can uh, molecules that can signal whether the cell is inherently uh, impaired or, or, or compromised or compromised by a pathogen. Uh, but this all leads to uh, uh, fibrosis or scarring of the heart. Uh, you can have impairment of microvascular, so that's poor blood flow. You can have impairment of uh, 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 stimulation of my, uh, fibroblasts. Uh, all of these things lead to poor circulation, uh, poor oxygen delivery, more ischemia, more inflammation, and more scarring at the heart. So what I'm trying to do is help you connect some of these biochemical abnormalities with some physiological changes. Mm -hmm.